conversation with SYD Life. Today we are talking all things HSC and we have some amazing guests with us to talk about not just how to survive the HSC, but how you can thrive. And so right now I'm joined by the wonderful Megan Gilbert, who is a high school English teacher and you were just, Megan, this year, or still are, uh, the year 12 year advisor yeah. at uh, the school that you teach at. Mm-hmm. And you are also just recently a published book author. So I am. congratulations for that. Congratulations. I'm so excited to read Thank the you. book. It's going to be you. so good. Um, but unfortunately, we, we're not talking about the book today. No, we're talking about fine. some HSC skills. Uh, you particularly teach English and all those sorts of amazing things that I can tell you I was really good at at school. Um, I'm sure that you would agree (laughs) that I probably was really good. Um, But uh, we want to just talk about today some skills and things to help some people, these guys who are listening, who might be just about to go into their HSC or they're in grade 11 and they're so scared to go into grade 12, um, just to kind of, yeah, ease the ease the pressure, get some great skills in place, some top tips, some easy tips. Um, but before we jump in, I did want to ask a question um, and I'm going to ask everyone on the podcast today this question. Okay. Um, are you a Taylor Swift fan? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I, absolutely. Oh my She's gosh. a huge Taylor Swift fan. Okay, if someone was to come like from behind the curtain here and give you a s- ticket to a Taylor Swift concert, mm-hmm. um, obviously she's coming next year for the Eras Tour. Uh, if you got to go, what song would you want her to sing as the surprise song? Great question. Um, humble, it's not humble brag, but just brag. I actually did get tickets to Oh the my tour. gosh. <laughs> I didn't know you got tickets. Okay, you're going. Yeah. What song would you like her to? Uh, She's already done it, but I'm under the impression that she's going to reset them for international tour dates. Yeah. Um, Exile. Exile. Yeah. That's from, okay, no, I've got this. It's from the Folklore album. Well done. Yes. Well done. That was pretty good. Okay, thank you. I'm noting all of these down just for future reference. Wonderful. Maybe someone... I did have someone behind the curtain with a ticket, but now that you've got tickets already, they're not going to come out from behind the curtain. Okay, let's, let's talk HSC <laughs> skills. HSC skills. So um, you're an English uh, HSC teacher. Can you just break down for us, you know, we've only got a little bit of time, but could you break down for us just some, uh, some really basic, your, your top studying tips? My biggest tip for students who are about to sit the HSE yep. um, or want to keep preparing over holidays, so that goes for anyone in any year group, mm-hmm. is um, to actually keep the same schedule that you have for school right. um, over the holidays. So year 12 have about six weeks now or five weeks now before Whoa. they start the HSE. So my biggest tip is just keep the schedule that you have from school. Keep your school timetable. Um, you still get recess, you still get lunch, yep. um, get rid of all the distractions that you ordinarily would have had. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, that way you're getting at least five hours of study in every day Wow! and it's the same as you would have done at school. So stamina wise, we're usually pretty good with still doing that. Yeah, cool. Just a little bit more disciplined. Um, and I know a lot of students really like collaboration. So nice. I recommend getting together with your friends and doing like some focus study on different subjects or topics, get some good snacks and Yum. You know, get all your stuff together. Some mini and, M&Ms. Yeah, good one. <laughs> good one. But yeah, make it yeah. like fun, you know. Yeah, that's um, right. Go to the library, go to a friend's place mm. um, and, yeah, work together. I know that that's, that works really well for some students. And I think my biggest tip is just not to forget to take breaks because yes, some of us go Great. really, really hard yep. and then we burn out after a couple of days because we think we're doing the best thing because I'm studying eight hours a day and, yeah. and that's just not sustainable. So yes. really important to take breaks, um, intervals throughout the day, however that works best for, the, you know, individual people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, take breaks. Great. Yeah. Go for a walk. Yeah. Go for a swim. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. Get up, walk around, watch one episode of a show or I don't know, go make some yummy lunch or go to Char- Charlie's and yeah. get something. When I was in school, I, I did that particular thing. Like I, I studied really hard, but I love to still have fun. Yeah. And I, I always 
like made sure that I was having fun every day yeah. and I was getting out and doing things that I loved. And I had friends who I didn't see for ages because they were just studying and studying and they yeah. burnt out. Yeah. So that's a really, that's really, really great, great tip. Great tip. And so w- I, I want to jump in like to a bit of like a niche one, but you do specifically English. Yeah. How can I memorize my English quotes? Um, everyone's going to be different yep. for this. Personally, for me, I did this in year 11 and for probably like five years after, I still remembered my Othello quotes. Um, (laughs) Putting quotes to songs that you know really well, change the lyrics so you sing the melody but you're singing the quote itself. Could you give us an example? Uh, look, it's been a re- it's not, it's not been five years anymore. It's been a really long time since I wish, but, um, yeah, I think I put like, yeah, my Othello quotes to, it actually might've been a Taylor Swift song now that uh, I think about exile. it. <laughs> Didn't come out. No. No, sorry. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that was actually really helpful. And yeah. then I, this sounds so cringe, but I listened to it on repeat. So I, I just opened GarageBand. You could do it in a voice note or something and just literally, you have to do it and it's, you will cringe, but just sing. Or recording yourself. Yeah. Totally. I know, but it actually, it really does work if you've got like an auditory brain. Yeah, that's where you learn, yeah. Um, and if you're musical, then even better. But yeah, yeah actually sing your quotes to yourself and then oh. whilst you are studying, play and put it on repeat over and over. You will be surprised. How your brain works. Yeah, fully. When you go for a drive, that's what you're listening to. And it's depressing. I get it. It's really sad. (laughs) Like that's a really quick way to like ruin Taylor Swift's lyrics. But future you will thank you. So that can work. Or like other mnemonic devices, things like that, if you're like an auditory person. Yeah, right. Um, Otherwise, brilliant. evidence tables, I think are the best way to organise them. So, you know, you've got your quote, you've got your technique, you've got the effect of it, link to an idea. Um, so if you're quite an organised person, colour coding it can be quite nice to do. Yeah, the visual. Um, yeah. yeah. And then stick it up around your room, mm-hmm. chuck one in the bathroom or uh, wherever you spend time, like on the bathroom mirror. So while you're getting ready in the morning, you mm. can just read them, read yeah. over them. Yeah. Um, flashcards, getting your friends to test you, all nice. that sort of stuff. So it's just finding a – I think it's just finding something that works best for the individual. Yep. Those are kind of my suggestions. Brilliant. It, I love fine. it. So along the lines of, of English exams, if we keep going along those lines, with an English paper, if you get into the exam and you sit down and the paper is in, the question for the paper is not what you were expecting, um, which doesn't need to just be English. Obviously it can be yeah. um, any other subject, yep. right? Legal studies or whatever you're doing. Um, and you sit down and you're like, oh, this is a paper on folklore and not fearless <laughs> and I just got my Fs mixed up. You know, h- how do you – what do you do? Mm. Okay, can you give us some tips on how to kind of cope with that stress that you would feel in that moment? Totally. I guess in response to that, I have some like pre-work that you can do to try to mitigate this happening and Great. then I'll speak to – in the moment yeah how to deal with it um the questions I'm speaking on behalf of English but I think this goes for every subject the questions are based on the rubric so if you know the rubric if you know some synonyms for the keywords in the rubric nothing should be a surprise right it might be how they're all brought together that could be a bit surprising um but um if you know the rubric then you should be pretty well prepared for just about anything great Um, so in saying that, um, when you get the question, focus on the keywords. Um, like I said, they'll be from the rubric or they'll be synonyms from the rubric. Mm -hmm. So focus on those. Don't look at the, don't worry too much about getting the whole question at like first, like Mm -hmm. don't try to understand the entire question first, break it down. Let's look at the keywords that are in there. What do I already know about these things? Yeah. Um, and then look at the question as a whole. Um, and see what it's actually asking you to do with those. I would just suggest take a minute or two just to stop, think for a moment, write a plan, and then get into the essay. I think sometimes we try to jump into it straight away. Yes. I think I know what this is asking me to do, but perhaps we not fully not got quite. it. Not <laughs> quite. Yeah. yeah. So I recommend doing this regardless of whether you're surprised by the question or not. Yeah. But yeah, I just recommend yeah. just taking the time to plan, mm-hmm. to um, think about the question before you try to dive into the essay. Great. Um, Great. And Love actually it. one other thing on that. Yes, please. Um, practice responding to unseen questions before your exams as well. 
um, okay. is a good thing to do. Your teachers have probably given you practice papers or practice questions. If they <laughs> haven't, you've got five years worth of papers to look back on. And you probably yeah, right. haven't done all of them at this point for every subject. So there are some unseen questions in there. Go into it thinking, I uh, don't know what this question is. I'm mm-hmm. pretending that this is my paper. Mm-hmm. Put your notes away. Do it under time conditions. Download the paper from the NESA website and just dive into the into the question. So you're actually then getting a bit of practice in responding to Great. unseen questions. Yeah. yeah. So your brain's used to it. Yeah. I used to it's always freak out with those. I would, I would freak out. Oh. Uh, and fair <laughs> enough. Like it's really, it's actually really stressful. I yeah. fully get it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a good skill just to yeah keep building up. That's great. So say it's the night before, it's the morning of the exam, your big exam. And, uh, you know, what would you say to people, uh, someone who uh, is maybe, actually, you know what, I feel quite prepared. Um, what would you say for them to do? What are some great things that they could do to, to stay prepared, to stay ready? Um, and then what would you say to someone who is like, oh my gosh, I'm so unprepared. I need to cram. I need to do all this. Um, what would you say to those two, yeah. two people? Yeah, great. Um, funnily enough, my answer is probably the same for both people. Nice. Um, and what I mean by that is no matter what, you need to get a good night's sleep yeah. before an exam. Um, There's no point staying up until 3am whether you are cramming because you feel super unprepared or if you're uh, really well prepared, but you feel like I just need to do more and more and more. (laughs) Yeah. Whatever camp you are in, either way, stop. (laughs) You you need to sleep. (laughs) Please sleep. Go to bed. Yeah. A three hour economics exam will be so much easier if you um, have slept. Um, (laughs) So get a really good night's sleep. Yeah. In the morning when you get up, Um, If you are really stressed and you feel like you need a cram, just maybe get up a little bit earlier. That's okay. But um, everyone needs to eat something before an exam. You need to have something in your stomach. Those exams will be much easier to do if you have eaten. So get up, have something to eat, um, have a good breakfast if you can, or at least a banana or something. Yep. Um, And then just do your final revisions. Um, It's nothing worse than sitting in an exam and your belly's rumbling. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And then you're like Trust worried me. that everyone else can hear your stomach rumbling and then you're not oh, focused yes. on what you're actually writing. Yep. <laughs> not yep. worth it. Yeah. So if you do feel like you need to cram, my recommendation is, and this is so much easier said than done, but yeah. don't stress. You probably know more than you realize. Yeah. You've been going to classes for this subject for two years. You probably know more than you realize. I love um, that. And just do what you can with the time that you have, um, but just not at the expense of your physical or mental health. You need Great. to, like I said, get a good night's sleep, eat something. Yeah. Um, if it's, you know, all up here, you need to go for a walk or talk to someone about it. Do that. Um, yeah. Make sure you're supporting your physical and mental health. That's great. Um, and like I said, you're better off getting a good night's sleep and getting up a little bit earlier the day of, like you probably normally would anyway. So that person who is really well organized, they're probably going to get up a little bit earlier anyway. Yeah. You know, we want to make sure we get to school on time or wherever your exams are happening and you want to make sure that you are ready to go before it starts. So yeah, get up, maybe just revise your notes again, but there's honestly not too much point in cramming because if you're trying to cram in a year's worth of learning yeah. into an hour or two hours, then yeah. you're just going to get more stressed. Yeah. So try to rely on the fact that you probably know more than you realise. Mm. Look after yourself um, and just know that I guess this is probably a greater um, topic, but there are a million ways into every avenue in life. You yes. know, if you want to get into this particular uni degree, there's bridging courses, yes. there's different things that we can do to get us there. Yeah, it's not um, be all. No, and your one mark on one exam will not yes. break your entire career moving forward. So, so good. it's obviously important. I'm not downplaying the importance of it. It's mm. definitely important, but yeah, try not to get too stressed about it. It, it will be. It will be okay. Yeah. You'll get there. So, yeah, good yeah. sleep, eat something, revise as you normally would um, and just look after yourself. I've got one more question for you um, and this is not actually for any of our HSC students. It's for any of you parents who their child's about to go through the HSC or is coming into it or whatever. Do you have any tips um, or advice for them on how actually they can support their young person to really just thrive in the HSC um, and and not, you know, 
disintegrate or yeah. run away or yeah, yeah. <laughs> pack your bags and <laughs> go. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, totally. Any, any tips? Yeah. Um, I definitely recommend having a conversation mm-hmm. with your child um, about how you can best support them. Um, I think sometimes you try to put boundaries in later, um, like no TV, no phone, whatever, and that's just going to add extra stress. Yes. They're already stressed. Mm. We don't need to add any more. So, um, yeah, I really recommend having a conversation with them about what kind of boundaries do we need to have set or what kind of expectations, what do you need from me yeah. as your parent um, and how can I provide that? And that might just be being available to open up the home to have friends over for a study session or it might be making sure that there's I'm eating really well or my snack favourite snacks are always going to be in the <laughs> cupboard or whatever it is or it might be accountability. Like, yes, here's my phone, take it from me for the next hour and a half, whatever. Yeah. It's really good to set that up sooner than later. So just ask your teenager what they want, yeah. um, how you can best support them because, again, everyone's different. Mm. Um, and just, look, your kid's going to get stressed. It's a stressful time. We all get stressed. Um, we're all in this sort of stressful situation. Mm. Um, parents are going to be stressed. Kids are going to be stressed. So just have that extra grace. Um, there mm-hmm. will be days where they don't want to study and they won't. Yeah, it's okay. It's not the be all and end all. Yeah, we got to yeah. we got to succumb to it sometimes. Yeah. Um. So totally. it's okay. To, it's okay to recognize that it is just stressful. Um. And mm. it'll be over soon. Um. Uh, but yeah, do what you can to I guess support them. Yeah. Um. And just make sure that they are eating well and yeah. eating regularly. That they're drinking lots of water. Um, Come on. These two things can be forgotten very easily yeah. by kids who are in the throes in the, of studying. Yeah, so, in the zone. Yeah, totally. So definitely recommend make sure you've got some good food for them, make sure they're drinking water and, yeah, don't try to take their phone away from them unless they've asked you to <laughs> because that will just cause more friction. I would not recommend it. Would so, not recommend. No. But, yeah, that's <laughs> my suggestion. That's great. Thank you. That's really, really good. And, you know, give a couple of unseen essays a go and yeah. and see what we'll it's see like how you to go. be in their shoes. <laughs> Uh, no, that's awesome. I think that's really good. Well, thank you, Megan. That was amazing. Oh, and I uh, took many, many notes in my in my mind. I'm ready to sit the HSC. So amazing. Uh, we're about to just talk to uh, Jackson Sporting about his experience. So it's going to be awesome. Thank you. All right. We've got Jackson here in the studio with us now. Tell us, uh, you are a business owner, yep. an executive leader, yep. and, uh, you know, last but not least, a creative man. Uh, uh, yeah. But- we, we want to talk about your yep. experience through the HSC. Uh, we want to talk about your experience outside of school once you finish the HSC, going mm-hmm. out of school, figuring out, you know, what the heck, who am I, what do I do, um, you know, all, all those kinds of questions that we wrestle with. But I have a, I have a question for you before we get started. It's okay. very important. Uh, you know, Taylor Swift's coming to Australia next yeah. year, Era's tour. Uh, did you get tickets? Did not. No. Okay. If you were to be given tickets, say, you know, someone walked out from behind the curtain right now and gave you a ticket to Taylor Swift, what would be the song that you would want her to sing at the concert? Because she does these special songs that she pulls out. What would be a like- A Taylor Swift song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the Woods. Out of the Woods. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Great answer. <laughs> out of the Woods. 1989. Great album. Yes. So Jackson, uh, we're talking about HSC, we're talking mm. about out of school. Uh, the- Guys who are watching or listening right now, you are currently going through your HSC or you're about to start it or you're in grade 11 and you're coming into your HSC year. Uh, Jacko, you went through your schooling life and I would probably say that um, from the stories that you've told me, uh, you know, the study education part of things was maybe not your highest priority while you're in school. Talk to me about some of your experiences. Maybe give us a story about your experience in school. What did you find study to be like in school? Look, um, from the get-go, I didn't understand what school was about. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was an opportunity to hang out with your mates. So um, good. <laughs> and that's all I did. Like I kind of didn't really do much homework and um, didn't really understand how to learn. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the most, um, I guess the hardest thing for me to kind of navigate. It's like you just kind of faked your way through. Even right up until um, the HSC, I remember just feeling like, oh gosh, like, this doesn't really matter. Um, 
and I only attempted the HSE because my parents had put me in school to do it. Yeah. Um, out, outside of like finishing, there was the opportunity to leave in year 10 and go and get a trade. My dad was like really mm-hmm. for that. And I was like, oh no, I kind of want to stay because I don't really know that I want to do a trade. But right. I feel like the latter parts of high school is, oh, I got to start to make all these big decisions that are like yes. going to form the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just wanted to make my own path and... I kind of did that. Like I went through and did the HSE to my the best of my abilities. I didn't want to kind of put myself into like stress out and freak out because, you know, next year I want to go and do this or study that. I actually didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so like schooling for me was, I was a bit of a naughty boy. Um, <laughs> my reports from since you got reports, yeah. always said the same thing, which was just, Jackson is a sound student, however, is easily distracted. distracted. <laughs> and I was like, do they just copy and paste this from year on year or Come am on. I just acting this out every year? So I guess I didn't really, um, my whole schooling was just to make friends and yeah. kind of learn a few things. And I found some things interesting in school, like I really liked ancient history and Random the topics. Roman Empire. Yeah, I think how about often it every do you day. think about the Roman Empire? Every Jackson. day. I had this conversation with my wife this morning, <laughs> and she was like, "So, like, to be honest, how often is it?" And I was like, "At least every second or third day." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So to answer your question, school mm. was um, it was just like this time thing for me. It was just mm. like, how long till I get out of this? Sure. Yeah. And then once I got out, um, I didn't really know what to do. Yeah. I kind of fell into a few different jobs here and there, but I liked that I was trying different things. Mm. I knew in school from some of the real practical subjects like design and technology and woodwork, metalwork, those types of subjects were really beneficial for me because I started understanding I could like to learn with my hands. Right. And I started to learn, oh, I actually learn better when I'm doing something practically rather right. than sitting and looking at a textbook and trying to digest that information. Yeah. Um, Kinesthetic learner. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Very I'm visual. Saying. Like mm. I love the pictures in the books more than mm. the books themselves. And I think as that kind of moved forward into the end of HSC and what I wanted to do, I started doing things like I started making my own T-shirts and doing different creative things. And I was like, oh, wow, like, why didn't I do visual arts in school? Why didn't I do... But it wasn't cool to do arts. It wasn't cool to do photography in school. It was, like, really weird. And I was like, there's all these weird social things that happen in high school that do not matter. Yeah, and they stop you from kind of... Yeah, and they just make you... They kind of form you into a box. And it's like, Mm. after HSE, the world was my oyster. And I kind of took it off from there. Like, I... I started doing some random handyman work after school, learned what it meant to like kind of work a full working week, um, tried a few different things and got an opportunity in television. Um, wow. Yeah. So I was doing some warehouse work for um, a company, just cleaning up some stuff and they had a studio that was attached to the company and one of the chief engineer came past me one day and was like, oh do you want to kind of clear out some of our warehouse? And I was like, sure. And then next week I did some work for him and he was like, you know a bit about computers? And I was like, oh, a little bit. And yeah. he's like, how'd you like to work in television? And I was like, <laughs> are you kidding? Like, But it was only because I'd made some sort of a start. I wasn't waiting. Yeah, you for, just got in there. Yeah, and I was just like, I'm going to take any opportunity that comes my way. Yep. Fast forward to where I am now, I'm like, got my own studio. Like yep. I've been in the industry for... 15 years now I've flown around the world doing commercials and stuff like that and so it's like, cool I didn't really know that that's what I wanted to do mm. when I was in school yeah. so I guess like my encouragement for everyone is just because you don't know now doesn't mean you're going to be always in a place of I don't know but yes. like take opportunities as they come try and do different things. Um, if you have an interest, say it might be animals or something like that, go and work at a veterinarian or something like that. Try yeah. to see what it's like to work in that industry rather than just basing yourself on, this is what I studied, so therefore I only know these things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did you have Did you have lots of – I know I had lots of friends yeah. who felt very pressured to go straight into uni oh. after school and they – 
um, you know, no hate to the business degrees and the comms <laughs> degrees, um, but they jumped straight into, you know, a comms degree or a business degree because, or an arts degree or something like that because they didn't know what they wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and so they just spent three years at uni and finished with a degree, which is great, um, but still actually didn't know what they loved and what yeah. they wanted to do and go forward into. And did you find that with your friends or peers that you had that yeah, same there was, thing? there was probably only two or three people in my year that actually graduated that went on to study something that they would, they'd kind of picked up in school. Yeah, wow. And, and then it turned into a career. Yeah. The rest of them just jumped around uni degrees for the first three years of Gosh. uni doing this, that and the other because yeah. they were like, oh, I did this in school. I did a bit of business studies in school. Therefore, yeah. I kind of like that. But it's mm. like there's so much more... Um, that you can learn outside of school. Yes. I studied more outside of school than I did in high school. So I've done um, eight years of study since high school. Wow. And it's really interesting because I've got a plethora of different things. I've done electronics and communications. I've studied film and television. Brilliant. I went and did a degree in design. It's like... Yeah. But I was the bad kid that didn't really understand school. And I think the pressure of like only knowing what you've experienced is one of the really hard things to kind of make all these big decisions towards the end of, you know, the year of what am I going to go and study Mm. next year? Do I have enough points to kind of get into that degree? Yeah. Um, My, my thing is always, I've always encouraged everyone to just go out and experience life, what the world has to offer. You don't even really know who you are. You know who you you are as a teenager in high school. Yes. But like, Go and experience um, different jobs, different countries even. Um, yeah. Find out, you know, what you really are interested in. Because mm. they didn't teach film and television at school. Yeah. They had an entertainment course, which I didn't even do. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like... <laughs> From the 90s. Yeah. Probably. I, I'm surprised that, like, I didn't do it because it would have been, like, something that I'm interested in. Yeah, right. It also didn't line up with my timetable. I think mm. that's one of the biggest things that I'm like, gosh, if I could have, I would have done all these other subjects. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think in terms of my friends, like it's so interesting to kind of, I think that I went to a private school for year 11 and 12 and the vast majority of us were all trying to get into uni, Mm. Um, mainly because that was like what we saw um, as the next step for after school. Yes, the option. yeah, Yeah, and it wasn't, no one had ever kind of presented this option of like, no, just discover yourself, find out who you are, what mm. you like to do, um, what interests you, what doesn't interest you. And you're only exposed to the subjects that you're learning at school. So therefore yep. you, most people kind of go, oh, yeah, like I kind of liked, you know, social studies. I might go and do that at uni or I'm, I did like business yep. study or I'm going to do maths extension 12 or whatever <laughs> at uni. Like, and look, I think if you're wired that way, go for it. Like if totally. you have that like – there are some people that, and there were some people in my year that mm. at a young age just knew what they were going to do. But I guess for most kids, it's like there's some jobs that are actually going to be out there in the future that yeah. don't have a uni degree attached to it yet. So yes. it's like there's so much more potential mm. for you to understand the future if you don't try and box yourself in based on your past. Yes. So I think, yeah, yeah free yourself of that and just take the time to figure yourself out. That's brilliant. That's really, really helpful. One thing before we finish, yep. what what would be like if you could stand in front of a year 12 person right now and give them like a one-liner um, of advice <laughs> to um, help summarise what we've just talked about here, what would you say to them? Learning doesn't stop in the end of school. Mm -hmm. you continue to learn for the rest of your life. So for me, it was learning how to learn. And I did that after school. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But now it's like open so much um, for me to be just a better human, be be a better person. I think it's helped me um, adopt um, a bigger view of the world. Yeah. um, In just knowing that I'm always in a position of learning. Brilliant. And yeah, never stop learning. Love it, Jacko. You're the boss of learning. Learning isn't the boss of you. So thank you, Jacko. That's really helpful. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, Until next time. Until next time. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Cheryl.
Great. Awesome. Well, thank you to Jackson. That was amazing hearing from him and his experience outside of school, coming out of school. And so now we're kind of shifting to, a, I guess, a new perspective, a fresh perspective of coming out of the HSC into life outside of school. And we have Lucy Laidlaw with us today. Hello. Welcome, Lucy. I can thank hear the you. crowd cheering in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Lucy. Uh, Luce, you did at uni, you left school and went straight to uni. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you studied and now you are working in your field, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to jump into that, but I do have a really important question for you. Yeah. I'm ready. First up. So, um, I know for a fact you're a Taylor Swift fan. Yeah. So if there was someone in the room right now, maybe like behind the curtain or something who came out from behind the curtain and gave you a Taylor Swift ticket and they were like, here, this is for you and three of your closest friends or whatever. And you were going to Taylor Swift next year, Era's tour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, racing. is there someone behind the curtain? <laughs> She's like, oh my gosh. Do I win an Era's tour ticket from me? <laughs> Congrats. No. Um, in, and you were going. What would be the one surprise song that you would have uh, to have her sing if you could choose? Oh, this is so hard. This is such a hard question. I've asked, oh I've asked the gosh. other two. Okay. And they had some pretty good answers. So, <sighs> Okay. It's like, where do I even narrow this down to? Um, I thought you'd have I'm an a, answer. I know. I'm like a big 1989 okay. person. Yeah. Jackson, you know what? Jackson picked a 1989 song. Mm, okay. I'm like also big on red. Okay. And big on reputation. Okay. So she can't do a whole surprise album. <laughs> she can do a surprise song. Luke. Okay. Okay. You know what? It would be clean off 1989. Clean. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Or new that's romantics. Great. Okay. So pick one. I feel like that's been said. <laughs> no. Your reaction. No. Jackson picked out of the woods. Interesting. Anyway, so let's jump in because I've spent too much time talking about Taylor Swift this podcast. Um, so let's jump in. You uh, obviously you went to school, you studied, mm -hmm. you're a um, great studious person, Lucy, I'm sure, and a little bit. Um, so tell, tell us, I know I did a little bit of a summary, but tell us about what you're doing now, a little bit about what you're doing now. and Yeah, so I went to school I, I kind of enjoyed school. Good. Yeah. I do have to say to validate all the people that yeah. are like me. Yeah. Um, I definitely enjoy learning and I went straight to uni um, and studied like a Bachelor of Science. Mm -hmm. I did my majors as data science and music. Amazing. So like that's an option. Like so many of the unis these days have like, you can do one thing and then something completely opposite and I put it all that. together. Mm. So always keep things interesting. Um, and now I'm working in like a big corporate company as like a graduate data scientist. Come on. So yeah, like I don't know if people know it's what so that good. is, but it's kind of like using those creative problem solving skills, yep. learning coding, all of that fun stuff. So good. Um, yeah, so it's been really fun. That's amazing. I still remember seeing your laptop screen once with all the coding on it. And I was yeah, like, that's right. I was like yeah. so shocked, like walking in on you coding. It was one of the funniest things. Um, but yeah. I love that. That's amazing. So you went into straight into uni, um, straight into a degree, and then straight into the, the workforce um, in the same field where you of the degree that you studied. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. That, yeah. that is like pretty amazing. And I know that doesn't happen for everyone, but it does happen, yeah. um, which is so cool. So what kind of, um, what, what motivated you to pick that course? Like, did you know from when you were six that you wanted to be a data scientist or, um, what, what were the kind of steps that you took to? Yeah, definitely not from when I was six. <laughs> Probably the field didn't exist, I don't think. But, um, yeah, I remember that so clearly in year 12. Yeah. I was really, I kind of put out what I was looking for in a career. Right. Like I wanted it to be something where I could be really heavily problem solving a lot. Great. I feel like that was something I enjoyed and had strength in. How did you find that you liked doing that? That's such a good question. I think some of it in school you can tease out a little bit, you know, like I yep. enjoyed maths and, you know, that kind of right. thing. Yeah. But then it's also in life and in church and yep. um, like I've always loved, yeah, designing things and being able to find the solution and cool. I kind of just asked around of what I could do with both that kind of logical side and a bit of creativity. Great. Um, and there's lots of things. I think I want to be an architect for a while. I was like, that's a good yeah, like nice. logic and creative combo. Yeah. Um, but then it was actually just my dad like mentioned that I should look into it one time and um, I'd right. never really heard of it before then. And I think it was like the first year of that course 
I'm at uni. So oh, wow. All of those like tech courses, there's always something new. So Great. Yeah, I'd always totally. say, I kind of looked on all the uni websites, looked at like all the subjects and mm-hmm. went, oh, I'd enjoy learning about that. I'd enjoy learning about that. Um, and that's how I finally landed on data science of wow. kind of actually looked at all the subjects and went, oh, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, right. So whatever sparks your interest, like just I go love for it. it. Look, look at all the details, look at the subjects. And, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't, so for you, it wasn't a matter of, I, I know the career or I kind of know that I'd like to do this career. It, it was more just like you found the, you found the course and yeah. then out of that. So, so it wasn't necessarily like, oh, I want to. Yeah. Less of kind of like, I want to be a lawyer. So I study law. It was yes. more, um, I knew down the track, anything in kind of technology and STEM area. Yeah. Once you, you know, you can get a degree in something and transfer those skills a lot. Yes. So sure, yeah. When I was looking for jobs later on, we might talk about this later, um, I'd found that I'd enjoyed it heaps in uni. So that right. kind of that kind of led me to go, okay, I actually do want to do something in this field. Yeah. Because I think we forget that in uni you study, like you do study one course, but you study so much within so that. So much. And exactly. you've got all your little niches in, in the course. And yeah. In every degree, it's not like it's just. Exactly. There's yeah. electives you can do and yeah. so many unis do what I did where you can throw in like another major from somewhere. So mm. keep, I wanted it to be, have lots of variety. So, you know. I love that. Trying to do music and trying yeah. to do like sciencey stuff too. And what uni did you go to? Uh, Sydney. Sydney Uni. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, local. <laughs> Come on. And did you, um, this is just for my own personal um, <laughs> knowledge, but <laughs> did you commute in? You did the commute? Yeah. yeah. How'd you find the commute? Um, love, hate relationship with the B-line, I'd say. Totally. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So to just to jump back, because I really love just like, I guess your confidence in just being like, I'm just going to do this course. Hmm. Um, was there anything else that you kind of did to kind of figure out that direction? Uh, like anything like any you know, personality tests or, or something like that that's a bit more... Is, yeah, a bit more know, tangible. Yeah, tangible to yeah. be like, oh, this would this suit me as a person or anything like that could, that could have helped you to get into that degree? Yeah, I think, I mean, in school they made us do these kind of career tests and some <laughs> yeah, of it was it. a bit, a bit not great. Yeah, right. But I think there was like a strengths one where I came back quite high in problem solving a few times and I was right. like, okay, that, that direction is something I want to go in. Right. Um, cool. And I also knew that I was interested in technology, Yeah. but I had no coding experience. I had done music and art in high school and mm. didn't do any of the IST or anything like that. Sure. Um, but I think over that summer break, I'd kind of signed up to do data science, mm-hmm. knowing that it's actually easy to change once you get there. So I kind yes. of, I, right. you know, there's things called census dates and yes, come on. you can completely change what you're doing after three weeks in and you've tested it out. Yeah. So I think over that summer, I like typed in like online coding mm. course. <laughs> And just clicked on the first one and really enjoyed it. And I was like, okay. Yeah, it was like nothing to do with data science. It was like website, making a website. Yeah, yeah. But all of that stuff, just trying things as much as I could, trying to learn online before I got there Yeah. to test it out before I got there. And I think I was lucky that once I did start, I was like, oh, yeah, this is something I want to do. Yeah. But it is easy to change, especially in something like a Bachelor of Science to a completely different major. Yeah. There's hundreds, so many to choose from. So I know. It's almost overwhelming at times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you feel when you were coming into um, like starting uni or just before you started or even just after you started, um, any any kind of like a bit of intimidation or like fear around it? I know this is this is um, a bit of a wild question, but like yeah, did <laughs> no, you feel absolutely. any of that? Or and how did you kind of navigate that if you did? I think the fear I felt was Cause I, I kind of got there and I just loved it. And I was like, I just want to, I want to learn everything I can. Like I want to build cool stuff and (laughs) make cool data things and code cool stuff. I think the fear I had was that imposter syndrome of like, Mm. I'm never going to be as good as my classmates or I'm never going to get a job in this field. Right. Um, which looking back on is like crazy to think about Yeah, because it was actually quite easy to get a job in this field. Mm. But that imposter syndrome of like everyone's doing better than me, everyone's coding since they were four and like <laughs> I've just come in to like technology a bit late. Yeah. So they I knew they wanted to be data scientists. They did. They, they did. Everyone did. in my first <laughs> computer science lecture did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it was that for me of yeah. I'm loving this so much. I don't want to miss out on getting to continue to do this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
that is, that is a bit of like a, a scary thing and you've got people next to you who you feel like are years ahead of you. But, yeah. And you hear people say that all the time, like, oh, there's no jobs in that. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no jobs in that. Don't bother studying that. There's no jobs in that. But I feel like that I hear like – a lot of teenagers that I'm around at the moment are like, oh, yeah, but there's no jobs in that, so I'm not going to study that. I'm like, no, study it. Like, if you're keen on that, go for it. And exactly. there's always going to be jobs. And if you're keen to study it, it, even if right away you don't find a job in that specific thing, you will, there will always be things around it that uh, have to do with that thing that you're studying. So it's, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, like, jobs change so much. Totally. You know, in this world we live in. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jobs change so much. Yeah. The best thing you can do is pick something that overlap of what you're good at and yeah. what you're what you enjoy. And what you love. Whatever's yeah. in the middle there, like yeah. become an expert in that and you'll be great. That's so good. That's the master that's the master level where you where you Yeah, hit exactly. Yeah. And and any subjects that you did in school, were there subjects that you did in school that kind of reflected the um course that you went into, or was it or was it a bit like random? Yeah, you? to be honest, I kind of stuffed up my year 12 courses. Yeah. <laughs> so like to anyone who thinks they've okay. done it wrong, like I think I, um, like for something like data science, I should have done like as much maths as I could. Yeah, but I right. think I like dropped extension maths after year 11 because my friends went yeah. in that class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was boring. Yeah. Um, but then I just kind of did like some online bridging course or something and it was fine. Yeah, right. Like I think going into that was the intimidation of everyone's done like extension two maths and come from overseas yeah. and doing all this math. Um, but it turned out up to be fine. And I think Great. whatever I, at every stage, like picking subjects for year 12, picking mm. uni, mm. it was just what do I look at this and think I'm going to really enjoy that. Yes. So I picked I art that, and Luce. music and Brilliant. English and I loved that at the time. Yeah. And those kind of skills that you get in those creative subjects as well can ap- totally apply to a corporate job, STEM field. Yeah. Like it gives you that unique approach to those fields as well. It's great. It's really good. I love that. That's the best mindset, I think, is like, am I going to love this? Because then you yeah. get people who come into uni degrees and they're just doing it because they think they have to. Oh, and, exactly. And they're just like absolutely just devastated or they're you know they're so sad or they're so just like unfulfilled and it's, right it's, it's like, like do something you're you love. spending every day on this like yeah you know like your year is just going to be what your days are yeah, so yeah, yeah. Are you were studying <laughs> totally. something that you enjoy yeah like really try to yeah. and, you know there'll be days where it might be a bit boring like yeah. you know a few subjects here and there but yeah overall if you yeah mostly enjoy and are passionate about it like yeah. you can't go wrong love it Love it, Luce. Very good. Okay, I've got one more question for you. Cool. And we're gonna go we're gonna rewind back to HSC, uh, just to loop off the end of the podcast. because uh, I wanna hear a little maybe a couple of top tips from you on um, how you kind of attacked the HSC. How did you in grade 12 and 11 as well, how did you kind of balance, uh, you know, schoolwork, study, uh, hobbies, social life, um, any other extracurricular activities? How did you kind of approach that? And do you think it was a good way to approach it? Yeah. Or do you think that you could have done things differently? Yeah, I think what worked for me, and I always recommend this to people because I think I really approached it as a bit of a game. <laughs> you got to take this a bit of a grain of salt, but... No, I love it. Like, it was just a game to me to get the mark that I needed to get into the degree I wanted. Yeah. Like, at this point, I knew I wanted to get into data science. Mm-hmm. There was an ATAR there that I needed. That was quite high, to be honest. Like, yeah. Um, and it was just a game of how do I get that without putting in so much more effort that it's completely consuming my life. Yeah. So, like, how do I get into the course I want whilst keeping all my hobbies, keeping my social life. Mm -hmm. And I found, um, for me, it was just that, it was kind of zooming out a little bit and just going, this isn't my identity, this mark. It's just a tool to get to the course that I want it to be in. Yeah. So. Brilliant. I I wouldn't even really plan out my weeks. I would just (laughs) have an end goal of, um, you know, I wanted to do like two mass papers by the end of this week. Yeah. Um, I know I've got sport. I know I've got this music commitment. I know I've got this birthday dinner, you know, this 18th or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and go, okay, I can shuffle that in here and here. Cool. Right. Rather than just leaving endless gaping, like I need to study for eight hours on yeah. this day or rather than having it as like a time thing, like mm. I need to spend this many hours. Yes. It's like I need to do this many things. Okay, cool. Yeah. I've yeah. ticked them off. Yeah. Um, I definitely am one of those people who likes having lots of things on the go. So yeah. it, w- it would motivate me knowing that I've got something fun on the weekend 
that I need to study now so that I can go to that thing, yeah. whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and it ke- keeps g- giving you perspective as well. Yeah. Like keeping those hobbies, it keeps it in perspective of this is just a tool to get me into uni if I want to do that or wherever I want to go as well. Yeah, that's great. A bit of quantity, um, no, quality, sorry, over quantity. Absolutely. In terms of study yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I think it, obviously it works for different people. Yeah. Like that really worked for you. Exactly. And then, but sometimes people are like, they they need kind of a bit of a schedule to keep their brain yeah, focused exactly. or whatever. Yeah. So it works for, but that, I really love that perspective. That's really, that's really great. I love it. I love it. Well, that's it. Cool. That's it. That's all I have for, for you. Um, but that was really helpful. I love that because we had some really great perspectives um, from from Jackson and then from yourself and then um, Megan with uh, the really good tips. So I think yeah. this has been a really helpful podcast. If I was in grade 12, I would be lapping this up. So uh, for those of you who are in grade 12, who are you listening or you're in grade 11, you're going into grade 12s, you know, send it to all your mates, <laughs> send it to all your friends, send it to your parents, send it to your cousins because um, it's been really helpful. So thank you. Loose. I really appreciate time and uh, let's go science some data. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for my ears to go away. My ears to a tickets to come from behind the curtain. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Signing <laughs> off. Signing off. Do I need to do an outro? <laughs> <laughs>